Are people making more than 100K per year broke? According to the media, yes, yes they are. A new survey says 51% of Americans making 100K or more live paycheck to paycheck. 16% who make 100K or more are even struggling to pay their bills. Now, I think we can all agree that your financial problems won't be solved at 100K, but I remember dreaming about what it would be like if I ever made $100,000 per year after I graduated college. You know, I'd be able to do crazy stuff like rent an apartment without roommates. I'd be able to go on a vacation once a year and I wouldn't be stressed out about making my student loan payments on time. We'll fast forward in time just a bit and I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to go through 100K per year by sharing my own personal finances with you. Ever wonder what six-figure earners actually are spending their money on? And are they really just horrible money managers? What better way to find out than by looking at my own expenses since I basically make 100K per year from my employer. Let's begin with how much I make and then we're gonna dive into my monthly expenses. Let's do this. So to set this up, I'm on a salary and I get paid $3,733.80 gross every other week from my job. To make the calculation a little bit simpler, I'm just gonna simplify things a bit and use my monthly take-home pay of $7,467 per month as the baseline. This adds up to roughly 95K per year in base pay. I also get a one-time annual bonus between $5,000 and $10,000 pre-tax uh, that I won't list here, and that gets me up to you know about 100,000. So I start the month at $7,467 per month in paycheck at income. Now let's dive into the list of things that get taken out of my paycheck before they ever even hit my bank account. Let's begin with my before tax deductions. This adds up to about $1,600 a month. In other words, it's 21% of my paycheck gets wiped out from this before it ever even hits my bank, a bank account. What a bummer. Here are the details. So $746, that goes into my 401k contribution. I have this set at 10% right now in 2023, and I haven't always had it set at this until this year. Uh, previously, I always had it set at 5% because that's what my company match amount was at. And I basically just figured this is a really good, simple way to reduce my taxes, save a little bit more on retirement. And I realized I could cut this expense out, put more into my pocket anytime I wanted, but this is what I'm doing right now. So that's what I'm sharing. Another $62 gets taken out for dental insurance. I have a flexible savings account that takes out another $115 per month. Uh, this is pre-tax dollars. And if you've got kids, you know, it seems like you're always going to check up stuff like that. So I use this FSA to cover some of these expenses tax-free. Again, this is another item I could cut out if needed. Of course, that would raise my taxes a little bit too. Next is medical insurance at $660 per month. I pay for the best healthcare plan that I can through uh, my employer. It's totally worth it. This covers me and my wife and kids. Finally, I pay another 18 bucks a month for vision insurance for the family. That covers my pre-tax expenses. Again, this wipes out 21% of my paycheck per month right off the bat. Now let's get into my actual taxes. So $2,764 in total taxes are taken in my paycheck every month. In other words, 37% of my paycheck goes to this part. 410 goes out to OSDI, and you can see the rest of my expenses here on the screen. But if these numbers sound a little high, one reason is because I take no tax deductions. I also contribute an extra $800 per month to my federal withholdings. This reduces my taxable amount at the end of the year. As background, I do run a side business with an LLC, so I try to pay some extra tax through my paycheck on a monthly basis. Most likely, you're not gonna need to worry about this, and you can just send it straight to your bank account if you want to instead. Finally, I have one more tax deduction taken out, or after tax deduction taken out of my paycheck for 16 bucks a month, and that's for life insurance. So, after all the expenses I've outlined, the total amount deposited into my checking account per month is $3,082.02. In other words, 58% of my gross paycheck is wiped out before it ever even hits my bank account. Now I get it. Again, I could reduce my 401k contributions or my federal withholdings to boost my take home pay. I'm just letting you know what I'm doing right now so you can see what that looks like. Now for the fun part, uh, now that I'm down to 3,082 bucks per month, let's dive into my monthly expenses. 
and find out how much money is left over at the end of the month. I've never been a big spreadsheet guy, <laughs> seriously. So um, I've never really tracked my monthly expenses this close. So it's gonna be interesting for me to, to find out right alongside with you what I'm spending money on. Let's find out together. I pulled these expenses for February, 2023, straight on my checking account and credit card accounts. A little background about my situation. I do have two small kids and a wife. My wife has been a stay-at-home mom for a little over six years. So we're a single paycheck family, so to speak. Let's start with the good stuff, the monthly expenses that I don't have. We don't have any student loans. I've never been a big car guy, fortunately. It's not really my thing, but here's a look at our cars. Pretty modest by anyone's standards. I've got a uh, 2017 Nissan Pathfinder right there. I bought this new, paid off the loan early, and it's got about 60,000 miles on it right now. It's running fine. We're gonna keep it for a while. This is uh, also have a 2014 Ford Focus. Bought this car used for 8,500 all in. And uh, all right, I'll just go ahead and share it with you. I also have this 2016 Mercedes Sprinter van and this doubles as a camper van in the summer. It's the only cool vehicle I've ever purchased. I love it, I'll admit it. And this is fortunately paid off too. On another positive note, we don't have any student loans. I used to have them for years, it sucked. I paid them off about six years ago also, right before my first daughter was born and it's been great not having to pay them anymore. Thankfully, we don't have any credit card debt either. Anything that I spent on a credit card, I paid off right, right at the start of the month. So here's the monthly expenses we do have from February. Let me know where you would start trimming in the comment section below. Let's start things off with my $1,851 mortgage payment per month. This was actually under $1,800 last year. Taxes increased. Another $94 for cell phones, both me and my wife. I've got an internet, cable, garbage, electricity, heating bill, restaurants, eating out. I booked one night at a hotel on the way to Disneyland for that month. I'm really glad I paid for this trip in advance previously. And then I spent another $80 on gas. I work from home, so this, you know, gas isn't a big deal for us and uh, another $94 for swimming lessons and then of course there's Amazon orders and I just want to let you know that I've officially spent all my monthly take-home pay and hit $3,100 in spend right now and this is you know $83 above my monthly take-home pay already which is crazy because we haven't even gotten to the cost of food yet or anything that I would consider to be really very frivolous at all but enough with the excuses on my end let's keep going I pay $14.99 for a Patreon subscription. This is a subscription I use for a service called Clear Value Tax for stock investing tips. No, I'm not sponsored by them, but I think I think it's an awesome program. Another 20 bucks a month for Apple subscriptions. Another, you know, in February I had to do maintenance on my Sprinter van. That was another $1,100 roughly. You know, more expensive cars, more expensive maintenance, I guess they say. Another big one, over $1,200 in groceries, another $1,200 in private school, and then I pay another $1,200 to pay my wife on a monthly basis. So to recap in February, I had $3,082 deposited and I spent $8,100. This means I'm negative more than $500. bucks, $5,000 for the month. Bottom line, I'm blew out my monthly budget and if I didn't have a side business I definitely could not keep this going for very long but there is one thing I want to call out with this that I just kind of realized after looking through my own expenses you know I didn't go on any crazy trips this month I don't have any car payment I don't have any student loans I don't have anything like that and uh you know I look around at the people in my neighborhood there's tons of people they're driving new Ford F-150s. They've got the Raptor that costs like $100,000 at the lot. They're going on vacation to Hawaii. They're golfing every weekend. You know, what What does their budget look like? I probably don't wanna know, but frankly, I don't know how a lot of these people are able to sustain their lifestyle. Another takeaway I've gleaned from my budget is that, I mean, this is kind of a no brainer if you've got them, but kids are just really expensive. My personal expenses without them is like barely anything. I mean, I wouldn't have the private school expenses. Food costs would be way less, gas would be less. We wouldn't be booking trips to places like Disneyland either, stuff like that. Now, obviously, don't get me wrong, I'm super happy to have kids and I don't regret starting family at all, but the reality is, is it's freaking expensive, especially the way food and heating costs have gone up the past couple of years. According to this report, the median family income for a family with children in the United States is $82,767. This means 
means there are a lot of families living well below this number. And frankly, that can't be easy. Now, I've been blessed over the years to gradually earn a larger paycheck. My first job out of college, I was making 32K a year with more than $40,000 in student loan debt. And I had another, you know, 10K in credit card debt and yada, 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 car payment. And when you're making that much, it's a struggle every single day to get through. Thank God I was, you know, young and single while I was going through this time period because it would have been just so impossible for me financially to be able to make it happen right now in that situation. And you know, I know what it's like to get into survival mode when you're making sub 40K in most parts of the US. You start, you know, you're counting down the days to your next paycheck. You find creative ways to feed yourself, paying with change from Taco Bell. You know, you start to strategically space out the days when you're gonna mail in bills so that they're gonna land. Um, you know, on the right day when there's money in the account. And yes, I've done literally every single one of these things. Uh, so I know what I'm talking about here. And I don't say this so that you feel bad for me at all or anything like that. I'm just letting you know that I, I've got perspective on what it's like to be totally broke, how sucky it is. I also realize how insane these, how, how can I possibly survive on 100K per year videos uh, that I see on YouTube from tech workers. And you know, just how insane they seem when you're making less than 40K a year. Like boohoo, right man? If you're in this situation right now, I won't tell you that it will be easy easy to pull yourself out of it, but um, you, you know, just because it wasn't for me, but it is definitely possible if you stick with it for a few years, you try new things, you look for ways to make more money. You know, I did it by starting a side business and uh, that's kind of how I finally started making uh, more money, but it, you know, it took me a long time to do it, 10 years or so. Uh, and if that's something you're interested in learning more about, hit the subscribe button and we'll talk more about it in future videos. Uh, but here's my perspective on making 100K after looking through my monthly expenses, if you're trying to raise a family without a second income, I think it would be very easy to end up living paycheck to paycheck or go into debt while earning 100K per year. It'd be so simple. Even without buying anything crazy, this could definitely happen. If you want to say, go on a nice vacation once a year, or you want to go out to eat a few times a month, or if your car breaks down, um, you could blow through a paycheck pretty quick, just like that, or blow through a six figure income, just like that. If you're flying solo or you have a partner that works and helps cover some of your expenses though, I think you can still get into a great financial spot earning 100K per year. You know, as long as you keep your expenses down, you'll also wanna be with someone that can get on the same page with you on your financial plan and understands what the vision is behind it. I also wanna give a shout out to these three videos. One, two, three, I've linked to them in the description below. Each one gives a different perspective on living on 100K right now that I think is worth hearing out. The Josh Fluke video below, that's my inspiration for making this video too. So be sure to check that one out. I think it's um, really entertaining and really well done. Do you think 100K is enough to live off of comfortably right now and build some real wealth? Let me know in the comments. I'm a small channel, so I respond to anyone who leaves a comment. Thank you very much.